Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial. Have you ever wondered how you can get access to nice icons to use in your app? Or was there some kind of icon you saw someplace and you wanted that in your app also? Well, then this is the place for you because in this video, we will be taking a look at SF symbols, Apple's very own symbols and how we can implement that in our app for some nice symbols. So if that sounds good to you, then keep watching and we will be taking a look at it right now. So in order to get the SF symbols app, you can simply type it into Google, search for SF symbols, and then you will get uh, the developer page, Apple developer, and you can simply press, it's probably the first one that appears, and it will take you to the SF symbols page. Right now, five is the most recent one. So you can just check it out, read all of the cool stuff and uh, look at all the crazy animations here. But um, just press on download to download symbol five and then you will get the app and you will be able to uh, follow along on this tutorial. So once you download your SF symbols app, you will have this one right here. So here you can see we have a bunch of symbols and you can choose uh, between different categories. So what's new and multicolor maps, weather, it really depends on what type of actions or how you want your app to look. And you can most probably find anything you're looking for here. There are over, like what was it? Like a few thousand different symbols. You can either search for them or you can just simply look through the categories. Let's say you're making a fitness app, then you have a lot of different icons here or symbols at your disposal. Media, also here, you can just look at many different stuff. Many of them are, use, are really useful and you will probably use some of them a whole lot. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to just quickly take a look at how we could go ahead and use some of these symbols. And the best way to do that is as always to open up Xcode, create a new project and name it whatever you want to and save it wherever you, you want to. So let's make it an app sf symbol fun and we're going to click next and save it so while this is loading let's just think about what type of app we want to make of course the possibilities are as always almost endless about what you can make but um, just to get a get, get quick preview of what we can do with it i'm just going to create a slideshow so i'm going to have a slideshow of different symbols and I'm also going to have some symbols as buttons to go backwards and forwards through that slideshow. So pretty simple app but we'll uh, demonstrate the different things you can do with the symbols, how you can customize them and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to create a variable up here and it's actually it doesn't need to be a state, I can simply make it constant and call it symbols and set it as an array and it's going to be an array of strings because the way we refer to these symbols and the way we call them and use them in our app is we refer to them by their name so as you can see as a standard it is already using a symbol in this case the globe symbol to display as an image so that is the way we call it we say image and then refer to the system name and then in this case a globe. Now what do we know what the system name is and what options are available? Well that's where the SF symbol app comes in handy. So here we can first of all find the symbols that we want. So let's just choose a weather for example because they have a nice they have some nice colorful symbols and you can just uh, select one of them and you will see the name below it. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to set this one to multicolor and that way we will see uh, the symbols in some different colors. So I'm going to choose this one for example, sun.rain.fill, right click and copy name. And I can go back to my app and add that to my array. So now I have my first symbol in my array and I can just go ahead and select a few more. So let's go down to nature. I hope that one has some nice colorful symbols as well. I can perhaps go with a moon.circle.fill. 
So again, copy name, go back and paste it here. And I think I'm going to go for three symbols. So I'm going to choose another one and the last one. So let's make that one really cool. Um, let's choose one from commerce. Let's see if we can find a fancy one from commerce here. I'm actually just going to go for this one, the shopping cart one. Copy name, head back to my app and add that one to my array as well. So here we have an array filled with a few uh, symbol names. Now, if you go back, as you can see here, we could uh, choose between different renderings. So either a monochrome rendering, which will just render it in the same color. We have hierarchical, that's a difficult name to pronounce. Then we have palette, which means we can actually customize the different colors of the symbols. We can set a primary color to pink. We can set an accent color to uh, teal and make this just really beautiful. And if there's a third color, indigo. So as you can see, this can really become beautiful, but uh, this is something we can also do in Xcode as well, as you will see later. So let's head back to Xcode and begin coding our app. Actually, I can keep most of it, or most of it, it's only two views, but I can keep the image one and I'm going to set the system name equal to my symbols array. And I'm just going to pick the first one. I'm going to, I'm going to remove these ones and I'm going to actually set the font size, which is going to be uh, what will enable me to uh, customize the size of the symbol itself. So let's set the font equal to system. I'm going to set the size to 50. Let's just blow it up. Actually, that wasn't too large. Let's uh, go with 250. Boom, there we go. So here we have our symbol. And you might be thinking it's a little bit boring. It's just one color. Well, we can customize that in a few seconds, as you will see. We simply have to add the modifier symbol rendering mode. And here we can choose between the different renderings as we could up here, uh, monochrome palette, multicolor, and all that good stuff. So that's what we can do here as well. We can choose the rendering we want. So we can, for example, go with multicolor, which will show us uh, the symbol with multiple colors, as you can see right there. Or we could also customize it with a palette. And once we have set the palette, we can customize the colors we want in our palette with our foreground style. Foreground style. We can set the first one to black and we can set the second color to uh, blue and if there's a third color we can set that to indigo like that so as you remember these three colors are simply what we had here as well pink teal and if there's a third color indigo but most of the uh, symbols are really one or two colors but in case there's this third one you can customize that here so that is how you would go ahead if you had uh, chose the palette rendering. I'm actually just going to go for multicolor in this example and leave it at that. So here I have my first image, uh, but as you remember, I also wanted some buttons so that I could switch between different symbols. So let's go ahead and create a state variable up here. I'm just going to call it i, which is going to be an int. And it's going to be zero, which is going to keep track of where in the array we're currently at. And I'm going to switch out to zero for my newly created i variable. So now all we have to do is we need to add two buttons that are going to switch between the different symbols. So let's create some space here, and I'm going to create an h stack like so. And this is where I will be adding my buttons. So let's just copy paste this image i'm going to need one system name is currently empty which is where we will be filling in in a few seconds and then we can add another one here that will be the forward button and that will be the backward button so let's see if we can find a forward and a backward button we could either scroll through all of this or we could simply search here forward Let's see if there's one of these that we want. You can choose whatever you want here. 
I'm just going to go for, uh, let's see which move one. I'm probably going to go with this one, arrow shape forward circle. So let's go ahead and copy the name of this one and add it as our forward button. And I'm going to paste here as well. And then we just change it out to backward and I'm betting on that that's the name and it is great. So now we, I'm just going to create some more space between our buttons here and our symbol. So let's go ahead and add a quick padding for the bottom. And I'm going to set that to 50. Now, of course, you can also spend a lot of time customizing these buttons, just as we did up here. But I'm just going to do it a little bit swiftly and uh, simply add a modifier and not uh, worry too much about how they look right now. So I'm going to add an on tap gesture action. And what I'm going to do here is simply set I uh, minus one. And I want to do the same fancy stuff on the other buttons as well. So let's just copy that, paste it down here and say plus instead. So let's see how the app is currently functioning. So let's go ahead and click next like that and I can go back. So works perfectly. The only thing you have to watch out for right now is if you press it one more time, you will go out of bounds and it will crash. So what you could do is you could add a little check here. If I is not equal to zero, only then are we going to perform this action that will prevent it from going into minus one and crashing the app. And we can actually do the same thing down here. Copy paste it. If I is not equal to um, symbols dot count. And we just have to change that out with plus. So now we shouldn't be able to crash the app when trying to go out of bounds. So we can go ahead and go forward. I had the preview crashed and that's because I forgot to set minus one. And let's reopen it and try it out once again. So let's go ahead and try to crash the app, which hopefully shouldn't be possible now. And it isn't, which is great news. Now, as you can see, the symbols are jumping around a bit. Um, so what we could do, we could add a um, frame to this. You can set the frame to height equal to 200, 250, and we can set the width to 250, and we could set, let's see, fix. And we could also set the aspect fit or the aspect ratio to be fit. So now we should be able to use the buttons without the symbol jumping up and down as it's now contained within its own frame. So here we have a slideshow of some different symbols and that was really the purpose of the app. So hopefully you got a quick introduction into SF symbols and now feel a bit more comfortable using them or start using them. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to click the like and the subscribe button and then I will see you back in the next video. Thank you for watching and take care.